you're considering the powers of the president to fire the officers of the United States, the seminal case in this area today is probably the case of Humphrey's executor. Uh, William Humphrey was the uh, appointed to be the head of the Federal Trade Commission. He was first appointed to that role by Calvin Coolidge, was then reappointed to it by Hoover. And when FDR got elected, he had some policy uh, disagreements with uh, Mr. Humphreys. Uh, he asked Humphreys to resign twice. So at that point, FDR fired him. Well, there was a little problem with that, and that was that the Federal Trade Commission Act said that the commissioners of the FTC could only be fired for inefficiency, neglect, or malfeasance in office. And FDR didn't cite any inefficiencies, neglect, or malfeasance in office that had been committed by Humphreys. He fired him purely because of a policy disagreement. And FDR essentially asserted that he thought he had a constitutional right to do so, uh, notwithstanding this restriction that Congress had purported to impose on removing Mr. Humphreys. And in support of that view, uh, FDR cited to a decision from the 1920s, just about a decade old, in the Myers case, where the president had removed a postmaster general from office, and the Supreme Court determined that the postmaster was a purely executive function, and there could be no restrictions placed on the president's ability to remove him. With respect to a purely executive official, Myers establishes that the president, to the extent that the president has the power to appoint them, the president also has the power to remove them. Fast forward to Humphrey's executor, the Supreme Court rejected FDR's argument that Myers applied under the circumstances. The Supreme Court said, Yes, this is an officer of the United States, but unlike Myers, the postmaster, uh, Mr. Humphreys, as a commissioner on the FTC, is not purely executive in nature. He is quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial in the nature of the powers that the FTC is exercising. And for that reason, the Supreme Court held that it was permissible for Congress to restrict the conditions under which Mr. Humphreys could be fired. So whether Humphreys' executor was correctly decided is hotly debated amongst constitutional law scholars today. There are significant debates as to whether the so-called independent administrative agencies really can be viewed as exercising anything other than executive powers. Clearly, they're not legislatures, they're not Congress. Clearly, they're not courts, they're not the judiciary. So what else can they be but the executive? There is, of course, the other side of the constitutional strain of thought that thinks it's perfectly fine for Congress to be able to impose all kinds of removal restrictions on officers who are exercising significant government authority. And those who adhere to that position tend to emphasize the importance of the what they view as the policy goals of independence from political accountability. They think it's a bad idea uh, for those people to be responsive to political pressures in the people, and generally they tend to be suspect of uh, the kinds of pressures that can be exerted on those officials uh, to in wielding their authority. And so uh, that camp is very supportive of Humphrey's executor, is supportive of even extending Humphrey's executor to a wide range of executive branch positions. So if you are a unitary executive advocate, you believe that Humphrey's executor should be overturned or at least substantially limited to the more narrow kinds of powers that the FTC of the mid-1930s was exercising. If, on the other hand, you are a robust advocate of independent agencies and the use of uh, statutory restrictions on the removal of officials to insulate them from the political process, then you're a big fan of Humphrey's executor and want to extend it. So Humphrey's executor really stands as the linchpin foundation for uh, how separation of powers applies in the context of the ability to fire high-ranking government officials.